be so hard, especially when you're pursuing a course that you don't have any interest in or you're going through some challenges, either personally or family issues, whatever it is. Many students go through academic crisis every now and then, and they do not know how to go about it. Today on Casa Move, we'll be discussing academic crisis and how to go about it. I have two wonderful people in our studio who are waiting to inform us and give us advice on how to go about academic crisis. My name is Paula Benji Anu, and I'm your host for today. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. changing lives through Christ. My guests for today are two very wonderful people who have insights on the topic we'll be discussing. I have Miss Naomi Teria Kwashi. She is a member of the Casa Greater Accra Secretariat and then a founding member of Casa UPSA. Miss Naomi, you're welcome. And also I have Mr. Elijah Kali. He's been here before. Hi, Mr. Kali. Hello. He's a former president of Casa Legon and also he's an author. If you missed the last episode, he released his book just a few weeks ago. Mr. Kali and Miss Naomi, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. As I said earlier, our topic for today is academic crisis and how to go about it. What do you consider as an academic crisis, Miss Naomi? Okay, so with academic crisis, I think we have two categories. Um, probably when you want to pursue a program and when you started pursuing the program. So um, what you think about, how to go about it, the right program to go and do, and when you enter, how to go through the process for you to complete. So that's how I see the crisis. So if you don't choose the right program to do, it yeah. can be considered a crisis? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mr. Kali, what do you think? Okay, so in my opinion, academic crisis has to do with um, the catastrophes or challenges one is poised to face um, in the quest of obtaining, um, let me say, higher education from, um, let me say, institutions of um, higher learning, like the when university. You say challenges, what do you mean by challenges? What kind of challenges? Yes, yeah, so anything that kind of um, pose a threat to one's um, desire of acquiring a higher knowledge exactly. becomes so things finance can become um, a crisis for someone who wants academically and as well um, relationships that the person may be introduced to on campus and also um, if the course selection as my sister rightfully said all these things are some of the challenges uh, or crises that one can face academically choose a program that is not right for you, it can be considered a crisis. What do you think someone should consider before choosing a program? Okay, so I believe that before you choose a program, try to go to the institute you want to attend, find out the programs they offer. Maybe your strength will be better in, let's say, accounting than administration. But because your friends want to choose administration, you also want to go for administration. But you know you are good at calculation. You know you are abreast with anything calculation, so you have to go to the campus, find out a bit, or you can go online, read more. It will open you to the courses and how you can do best. Okay. Yeah, so you have to inquire more about the course you want to do before you pursue them. Okay. Otherwise, you'll be found yourself with what time you do. Okay, Mr. Kali, these challenges you, you spoke of, is it, is it something that comes naturally or people create it for themselves? Well, I would say some we create them ourselves, and some still, uh, let me say, we come to meet them depending so on what the. Are some of the ones we create ourselves. So let's say, for instance, the kind of relationships we build on campus. Yes, um, the friends you associate with. That one is your decision to make, and then that process you may um, come across some challenges that you created. But let's say, for instance, um, the home you came from, um, you are facing finance uh, financial issues there and you want to pursue um, higher education, um, it's a problem or a crisis that you didn't have control over. I don't know if you are getting what I'm trying to communicate. Yeah, so but I think those are some of 
the things. Uh, what are some of the ones that we will come to eat? Can you give us an example? So that was um, the one I just stated, the you academic, uh, the financial ones. That one, you, you may come to meet it. Okay. Is it limited to just finances or there are other instances that people face challenges academically because they came to meet that situation? Well, I think, yes, yeah, there may be others that um, people will come to meet. Um, so, so let's say, for example, even the institution the person wants to um, pursue this higher um, education, um, the institution may also pose some kind of um, crisis or may some, have some crisis that the person may have to deal with. For instance, um, most universities in our country lack accommodation. So where someone wants to pursue higher education and it's kind of stranded, um, let's say you have a regular program, that means you have to be on campus too, and you are coming all the way from the north, and you happen not to get accommodation. Um, that kind of frustration, because I think I experienced a bit of it. Sure, yes, so <laughs> I remember my, I have to um, apply when we got admission. They told us to open the portal at 10 a.m. for uh, us to apply. And I think at 10, before I could log in, the site was already jammed. Before that, which institution is that? Well, I attended the University of Ghana, Legon. And that was the situation. So from 10 a.m. up to 5 p.m., I was still trying. That day, I fasted unwillingly, <laughs> but I couldn't still get the room. I think um, I have to use some protocols to be able to secure one. Okay, so you got a room finally, finally. on campus. Yes, it please. Helped. It helped. Okay. Just narrowly, if um, not being able to choose the right program, I find myself that I chose the wrong program. Is this something I can do to prevent any form of challenges from happening? Okay, very good. So I will, I will just encourage anyone who find fault, as you are saying, to get correct study group, get the right study groups to study with. Because to me, I also, I'm also a, a, a victim to it. Because of the courses I went to choose earlier, I was finally working with my GPA and others. So I was advised to get group study mates to always study with them. Because sometimes if you don't understand something, they'll easily explain things to you to the level you will get. So as much as you sit in the class, you strategize your time very well, and you make sure you get time to study with your friends. Because you've noticed that where you are now, if you make a mistake, you are going home. You can't make your family lose, and you can't lose as well. So you have to create a new environment and set up and get people to study with and move along. Okay. Yes. What, what if I'm the type that doesn't really like group studies? What can I do? So you have to strategize your time very well. You will not be playing whilst others are playing. You get extra time for yourself to study because you know what you are going through, the situation you are in now. Nobody can help you than you helping yourself. So this is the time that you have to sit down more study more, have time for yourself than to have time when your friends are playing. You can equally play with them, but make sure when you're coming back, you get some extra time for yourself to study. Because if you don't take care, you'll be going home. And your GPA is always waiting for you. Yes. Um, so can I come in sure. um, yes, to that, the issue of um, even course selection? Um, I personally believe that the first um, thing one has to consider when it comes to course selection um, is what, personally identifying your call in life. What, this is a Christian um, program, so I want to go from that perspective. What is the assignment God has given to you on this earth? What purpose are you here to serve? And I think when you understand this and you are pursuing a program or going to select a program, I think it will guide you. So someone who is, uh, let me say, called to deal with, let me say, social issues, you don't go and find yourself going to do administration uh, when you know that um, it may help because in this um, educational system we have, you can switch easily. But I think if you're able to focus on um, what is your purpose and let me say master it, it's going to be of a great help. So first, identify your purpose for life and channel your energy towards it and study around that area as well. Okay, but I, I know the issue of finding your purpose is, is a very broad topic and very yeah. deep. But how can a person identify his or her purpose? Okay, so the easiest way I think God um, has made it for us to identify our potentials or um, purpose is that interest he has placed in that passion for um, that thing. 
So whatever God has called you to do, mostly he makes it a passion for you. He gives that passion for it. So as a young, um, let's say a teenager growing up, um, pursuing education, and you realize that there are certain things you have desire for. You like drawing artwork. So you know that no, this thing is something that probably God wants you to um, venture into. You are somebody who also um, like calculating and do So from all these things, you'll be able to identify um, your quality. That's the basic one before, let's say, you can use a spiritual uh, sense, senses as well. But I think basically... I want to add something more to what you said. Okay, so as I said, you should know what you like. Well, as, as I did visual arts. Actually, I wanted to do accounting, but when I went to school, the school was full of, so I had to do my visual arts. But because I knew I had this calculation thing in mind and I wanted to do accounting, I, I managed to complete the SS person well and came back to do my accounting. So I started with DBS accounting and I went back to do my accounting course. So as I said, know what you like because you love the thing. Even if you are falling short somewhere, you encourage yourself and move on because you know this is what I want to become. This is my passion. So what you do and you don't receive any reward and you get the satisfaction, move towards that thing. Then to receive reward and you are not satisfied. Yeah. Yeah, so I think um, that is it. So I, I want to share a personal experience as well. You know, um, when I was about entering the university, I, um, I had this interest. Like I, I just wanted to be a policy analyst, somebody who wants to um, bring from policy formulations. And this. that was what I had desire for. And I knew also um, there was a call of God upon my life. So um, when I was choosing my course, I think... How I, did you find out there was a call of God upon my Okay, I think um, Timothy said that the spiritual uh, wasn't your gifting that were uh, given to you by the laying of hands and by the ministration of the Spirit. So through all that, um, I think I got to realize that there was a call upon my life. Yes, yeah, so when I was about choosing my courses, I did a course that was related to something that would give me basic knowledge about religion. So I did studies of religions and I did political science as well. Yes, and I think when I got the combination, I knew that definitely I was going to drop the other one, which was Kiswahili. Yeah, I know it's, it's a good course, but that was not something I, I had interest in in the first place. Yes, and I had a brother who was also interested that, no, these things, they doesn't give job, they don't pay. So go and do accounting. So I applied to UPSC as well, and I had both. Yeah, but the only thing that saved me was that um, Legon gave me a degree, and they wanted me to come and do a, a diploma course. <laughs> and looking at, <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> coming. UPSC. Yes, please. All UPSC members. Focuses lead. Okay, so my MBA, I did total quality management. Interesting. Interesting. So let's say um, my mother wants me to do um, accounting. And I don't want to do accounting. I want to do journalism. But my mother is the one paying my fees. How do I go about something like this? Okay, so the Bible has advised us to apply knowledge in whatever we do. Right now, it's your mommy who is paying your fees. If you talk to your family or somebody that your mother really listens to, and your mother is still not ready to let you do the accounting you want to do, our advice is to go for a journalism course. Complete it. You get the, the knowledge. You can still go back to do the accounting you want to do. But then if she refuses to fund my... Uh journalism degree how, how do i no that's what i'm trying to say so if she says that is the journalism she still wants you to do pursue the journalism course okay i should pursue what she wants me to pursue do okay. complete you get a job you save much you go back to do your accounting so i shouldn't give up never give up i don't believe in giving up because i'm saying this because i did um dbs accounting i went to do banking and finance one way or the other I didn't complete the school. I was withdrawn from UPSC. And I had to get that momentum again. In fact, I nearly hanged myself. But I said, no, I still have this in mind. I can't fail myself and fail other CASA members. So I encouraged myself, reapplied again to UPSC. I went to do the most difficult course on campus, which was the administration. I passed and now I have done my master's. So if you have it in mind that I can do it, I will do it. Nothing should distract you. So when you when you did it, how how did that? How did you feel? How what was the experience like? I I feel so complete because 
those who saw me when I was withdrawn, when I came back, others saw me and they were crying. People saw me and they were, they were so surprised that I was able to come back. Because people were telling me to go to Legon, they, that place is flexible. I said, I will come back to where I fought short and I'll make it better. So this time I got many friends who were ready to help me, who I was ready to be helped. I told them that I need help. This time I wasn't going like I knew, but I came down and told myself I need help. So people helped me to learn and I trust God that he has made everything so nice and so wonderful. So I am just encouraging anybody on campus who is going through my situation. In fact, the person should move on. He should encourage himself. Find steady groups. Find friends. We are in Casa. We have people in Casa who are very clever. Call them. Tell them you need help. And let them help you. Don't feel shy. Because when you complete the school and you are given that certificate, the glory will be to you, your family, and God. So they should encourage themselves. Some part of it also boils down to humility. Yes. To be able to humble yourself. Yes. Okay. At this point, we will take a message from the national coordinator on the things happening on Casa. Reverend Emmanuel Jesse, over to you. Hello, viewers. Welcome to Casa TV. The program is Casa Move TV Show, right here on Casa TV, changing lives through Christ. Today, we are in Nalerugu Nursing and Midwifery Training College. And as you can see, I'm with the national coordinator, and he's to tell us a few trips that we've been through to this place. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I want to say hello to everyone. Uh, by the grace of God, the Lord is doing a lot with the Casa Move mm. agenda. Uh, last two weeks, last week, this week, we began a journey mm. trying to expand uh, the kingdom of God to other untouched areas. We, we started from OT and then we went to uh, Volta region and today we are in the Savannah, not East region. But East region, we went to Bimbila, we went to Salaga, we went to Pembi, we went to Dambai. And today we are in Nalegu, and from here we're going to uh, Boko. From Boko, we're going to Bewa Training College. Then we come back to Navrango, and from Navrango, we go to Bolga. No, we go to UDS Navrango, the yard, then we come back to Accra. We go to Mampong. Mampong, yes, yes. Mampong, uh, Atebubu, and then Kumasi through to Accra. And by the grace of God, God is doing a lot. Uh, we got to in a little bit here. This is our second time of coming here, actually. And we planted a seed, a small seed, in the person of our wonderful sister here, mm. called Eunice. And the first time we came, we met Eunice and one gentleman who is having a, a, an exams currently. Eunice has been so helpful. She has put together a team of people who are also helping to propagate the gospel of God on this campus. Uh, the campus is pretty young. A young campus predominantly by Muslims okay. and uh, but like we, we saw today God has been so good unto us if he has introduced a lot of lectures unto us through our sister mm -hmm. and uh, let me just say that it's been good wow. <laughs> it's wow. been good yeah. wow. the Lord is indeed with us so we want to welcome our sister Eunice and then you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself okay. um, Please, I'm first in units and I'm in NNMTC and um, I'm offering physiotherapy as a course. Um, I'm here to help my daddies establish a <laughs> wonderful church wow. because I would want to have a church of mine and have whatever to do with God and how he will take me to. Wow. God bless you. So what have you done so far with, regarding the Okay. Casa move. Currently, we've seen the um, chaplain, the school chaplain, okay. and then we've organized some few people, okay. and we are yet to move to um, having a class to have our meetings and then mm. prayer meetings as well. Wow. So that's what we, how far we've gone wow. for now. God bless you, Reverend Coordinator. How how was the process? How did it go through for you? Oh, it was very smooth. Uh, I must say that. God has been good unto us because even though we struggle a lot before we had access to the town because of what happened on the road, but God has been very good because uh, the teachers were very supportive. 
and we, we met the master chaplain who in fact reduced the process to us he just gave us a form after completion of the form and submission we said we should miss him for uh, a classroom to be allocated to us for our worship so we believe that uh, by two or three weeks time everything will be over and we'll begin our service here like i said it's, it's a pretty young school and we, yet we have a lot of students around and we are doing the search we are still doing the search we are still identifying a lot of other colleagues of ours that we will fellowship with and like i said Eunice has been very supportive she has she has through her that we have access to the lecturers and uh, she has introduced almost four or five lectures on to us who have been very supportive and so Eunice, god bless god you, bless for you once again. Wow. thank you yeah. It's all about CASA, Christ Apostolic Students and Associates. Today we are broadcasting from Queen Bay, Nursing and Midwifery Training College. Uh, I am with the National Coordinator, Reverend Jensie, and we are going on a national tour to some of the schools in the Bota, Oti, uh, Sahara, and Brown regions, and to places where there are no CASA to, we are trying to establish contact so that we can establish CASA to help grow the kingdom of God. And we have with us one of our sisters in Pembe Nursing and Midwifery Training College, our dear sister, to join us to share an interview. Hello, you're welcome. Thank you. you tell us your name and your, your, your level in this school. Okay, I'm Melissa Ntakwe. I'm level 200, offering Register General Nursing here on campus. Wow, welcome, Melissa. This is Cassie TV. Okay. Um, we understand the Lord has been using you to organize people on campus for the CASA move and CASA takeover agenda. How has it been for you for this past year? Okay, it wasn't easy, I must first say, but by the grace of God, we are moving forward. Wow. And as now, we have a number that is quite encouraging. Wow. And I would say it's still by the grace of God that we are moving. So for now, this is quite okay. Wow. Yeah. We bless God. We hear this is a highly Muslim dominated community. How are you managing to pull through on campus? Yeah. It's true. It's, it's not easy, as I mm. said earlier on. So for now, that is the little challenge, but we are still pushing. Wow. We are still pushing. Wow. Though it's a Muslim community, but we have a lot that are from South, that are Christian, wow. that are with us here. Wow. Yeah. So how do you meet? When do you meet where? Okay, we meet mostly on Friday for normal prayers then Sunday for divine services. Okay. And the place we often meet is at Lecture Hall 2, that is NAC 14B classroom. Okay. That is where we uh, mostly- inside the campus? Yeah, inside the campus. Okay. That's where the prayers is at Mount Zion that we often meet and pray. Wow, this is beautiful. This is Millicent and she's the lead delegate organizer for all the activities on CASA, including the nursing and midwifery training college. Can you give us your contact so that anybody around watching us, those who are coming to school now, those who are on campus, those who are in town around Salaga, who want to help you and also join, can contact you. Okay. Um, it's 0544-598041. I'm taking it again. 0544-598041. For one, and so I want to use this opportunity to tell each one that is listening to me that all are welcome. Those that are yet to come, those are already on campus. Casa is calling on everyone. Let's join the move together and take Christ everywhere. Wow. Our brethren that are also coming, Casa is here waiting for you. The home is lovely. Come and let's join together. Thank you. I am very proud of you. That was amazing. Miss Naomi, if you had a word to describe Eunice, what would that word be? I can say her zeal is just like our Deborah in the Bible because sometimes it's difficult. Lady doing all this with your academics and everything, I'll give her a thumbs up for that. She has really, really done well. I can relate to her situation when we wanted to introduce CASA to UPS campus. It wasn't easy, yeah. So we had to 
get some of our legon on board. I was at UPSA and I was telling some of the campus ministries, but I said, no, we need campus ministry as well as CASA. So I started pasting posters on campus. Then later I had my colleagues from Legon. I used to leave UPS to Legon to attend CASA and it was very stressful, but God being so good today, we can count CASA UPS as one of the vibrant CASA campuses. So I believe what she has started, it will bear fruit and we will all receive the reward. And I thank her for everything she's doing. I'm also entreating any other person who wished to take this step. It is not a bad step at all. We should all try our possible best and let's move CASA far. Mr. Khan, what do you think? Yeah, I also want to first thank the national coordinator um, because I think what you need this is not the first time, but I think we want to give, up, uh, give her a thumbs up and say, well done. Um, I can relate to that when I was also in SS. I think uh, I wanted to start CASA in, in my school, Ghana Senior High, Tamale, and we fell on one of the locals to come and assist, and they, they didn't respond to our call, and you know, we're frustrated, and we have to complete and leave. Yeah, but this, the reason why I'm giving the thumbs up to the national coordinator is it, assuming it was this time that I was there, I think I will, because whenever you place a call to the national coordinator, it doesn't matter where the school is located, he's willing to travel all over to give the necessary assistance. So I want to give a thumbs up to the national coordinator and the team, and as well, well done to um, Junis. And also admonish any other person, um, whether you are in the secondary school, you are in the university, once you are a member, one is enough to start. Just be as um, the units of your campus and let's get CASA moving. So, so I think is, is there CASA at your senior high school now? Well, Tamale, it's been a long time I've visited there, um, but I'm sure maybe they may be CASA, but if not, with the vision of the national coordinator, I'm sure before you leave we'll office, start. we will start one day. Mr. Kali, do you believe in miracles? Well, do I do believe, in, Naomi, do you believe in I miracles. I do believe in miracles. So if, um, I want to use a scenario. If I was in senior high school and then I didn't pay attention to my books and I graduated with a bad grade because of that and I want to go to the university, should, can I still apply for the, uh, for the course I want to read and then start Praying, in. do you think my prayers will be heard or something? Okay, so I believe faith without work. If you have the faith and you don't work towards it, fine, you didn't do well. I will not encourage you to buy the university form. I will encourage you to go back to SS. Don't write the remedials, just go back to the SS. Join the form three and study hard and pass well. Then when you apply to the university you want, you back it with faith. With that one, God even will move anyhow he has to move because he knows that you are first taking the step and he's going to fulfill everything you want. So don't buy the forms now. God has a way of doing things. You didn't do well. This is the time for you to sit up very well. Go to any SS, talk to the administration. They will be ready to help you. Join the form three, study hard, pass well, then you apply to the any university you want to attend. That will be the best solution. Mr. Kali, what do you have to say to that? Well, yeah, I think I side with Miss Naomi's um, point, but when it comes to the subject of miracle, the Bible says that with God, all things are possible. <laughs> so, and when it comes to faith, too, I think it's individualistic. Yes, um, as in how the level of faith you want to operate at that level. So, I cannot sit here and say that, well, um, don't do it, but the, let me say the sequence or the normal thing is what Miss Naomi described uh -huh. but if still you think um, you have the faith to do it because i've listened to a testimony where um, a brother got admission to a university he didn't apply <laughs> such miracles do happen so what of you applying with a feeling uh, uh, let me say poor grades okay, but this was actually my doing i decided not to pay attention to my books yeah i still believe god is a merciful god maybe god wants to ha be gracious to you who knows the dealings of God towards us is different. Yeah. yeah so I think um, we should have that at the back of our mind. Uh -huh. um, there are some people that on campus, they are like, I am reading philosophy and classes because I was given philosophy and classics. So all I have to do is get the grades and then 
I am done. Miss Naomi, what do you have to say about that kind of attitude towards a cause and how is it going to affect that person? Okay, so you were given that cause. Now, I always say that face the, the reality of the issue now, give it all your best and expect a better future. Right now, that is what you've been given. Either you, you drop the course, you reapply, or you study hard and pass and make sure whatever is ahead of you, you receive. So this is the course you've been given. Try your best. Take that, I don't like it. That word, I don't like this course. Take it out. Love the, the course you've been given. Take it like it is the course I wanted to do and I've been Even given. Even if it's boring. Even if it's boring. <laughs> Enjoy it. You even read more. You even read more about it. Learn more about it. Read more on the internet. Let it become something you love because that is what you are doing now. That is what you are paying for. We, we are all talking about crisis and everything. That is the crisis you face now. So how do you bridge it? How do you overcome the crisis and make it your best something? So love it, enjoy it, pass it and pass it. For you know, that is the course which is going to help you in your lifetime. You are saying you don't like it and you were given. Love it now, enjoy it now, learn it well, pass it well. That will be the course that will help you in your future. Trust you me. Yes, so just to add to that, um, you know, the Bible says that my thoughts, that was God speaking in the book of um, Jeremiah, that my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways are higher than your ways. And having this understanding, whenever I think as a Christian, you wake up, you pray and believe God that should order your day, I think whatever comes your way, it could be the handiwork of God. As my sister rightfully said, Probably that cause you think you were giving was God's master plan for you. But probably you think um, it's not something you have an interest in. So, but if, as the Bible also said that, whatever is given or entrusted into your hand, do it wholeheartedly. Be diligent in it. So if you're diligent towards that cause and you come out successfully, even if you don't have a, I don't think um, there's a wasted effort in any area so maybe you're not interested in philosophy. You were given philosophy. Do it diligently. Get the best out of it. When you finish, leave it and go for what you think you have interest for. Who knows? By the time you even get to that field, you realize that there's an opportunity. You can use that thing you didn't have interest in to seize and enjoy. So I think um, we should be open-minded and give everything um, that has been entrusted into our hands the best we can. But you know, there are some people that actually try everything they are working so hard but things are not also going very well would you encourage that person to continue that course to let's say level hand level 400 or the person should stop midway and then be fair to another um, program okay so i will say that it depends on the individual if you believe that okay let me drop this course and choose a better course for myself that is me if you believe in that you can equally drop the course and you choose another course. Trust you me. This time, you, you know that who is sponsoring me, who is paying for my tuition, what is at home. You consider some factors around you. If the factors around you are so conducive that you can equally drop the course and pick another one, fair enough. But if you think, no, I don't love this course, but I have gotten to level 300. You, have, you, you can decide that I've got it to level three and let me finish this course and finish it well. When you finish it well, trust me, you'll get a job which is related to your job. And, and in fact, what you learned on campus. So the one you wanted to learn, you can go back and study it. As what, I said what, what earlier. What if you finish and you fail? What, what would you do? Do you have to start all over again or something? Failure, I don't believe it's something that to, it should let it weaken you at all. If you fail, wake up again and now move. Because you, you already you failed and it's not a course you even wanted. So if you wake up again, choose the course you wanted to do and tell yourself that this time I'm not going to fail. Even though I love this job, I love this course I'm doing, I'm not going to let it eat into my head such that I will love it and I will not study. But this time I am going to give a master plan to it so I will study better or I will plan my way of studying. Because this time, you say you love this course you are doing. So get a master plan for it. 
and tell yourself that you're not, we are not going to face this time again. Not to like failure on your side. So if your friends are playing, you play, but you ask, you ask yourself, will this playing take me to where I want to go? You have to be focused. That's right. Yeah. Mr. Kali, so if I have tried a course twice and I've failed all the two times that I tried, what kind of advice would you give me? <laughs> okay, an advice. Well, let me say, the first thing that I would just want to um, admonish such a person is first, you should know yourself. Once you know yourself and it's something you are determined to do, the Bible says that the righteous fall seven times but rise again. Yes, if you know that this is what I, I want to do and I have to, then you keep trying. It doesn't matter how many times you feel. I think myself, when I completed um, SHS, I didn't get good grades. Yes, so um, I wanted to settle for a certificate course in one nursing school in my community where I stayed then. Watching. And my brother, my brother said, no, he knows I'm not a bad student. I can do it. So if it would take me 10 times to write, and it was mass, me, I don't like this mass thing. He was like, if you have to take 10 times to rectify the mass and go to university, he's willing to pay for that. So I will do it. I don't know where the energy came from. That time he said it, the paper I wrote, I passed it. What about someone who doesn't have anybody around to tell him that I believe in you, you can do this? How, how can the person go about it? So first, motivate yourself. Yes, so um, you might not have people to motivate you, but the first motivation should be yourself. You should believe in yourself that you can do it. Otherwise, even people should motivate you, you might not be able to um, give the best because you don't even believe what people are saying about you. So first, motivate yourself that, yes, I can do this thing. And the energy will be ignited from within. Then you will do it. Mr. Naomi, what do you think? So to add to what he's saying, I believe that just get up from the dust, clear yourself, wipe all the tears, and tell yourself you can do it. Everybody believe in you, but if you don't believe in yourself, you can't move. That's people true. will support you. People will hold you. But if you don't believe in yourself, you can't move. Clear the dust, wipe your tears, and move. Have the move agenda in your mind. So everything starts from your mind. If you are ready to move, people will move along with you. If you want to sit down and cry, they'll watch you cry. But what is the end result? Will you gain what you want from crying? Will you gain what you end from you falling down? You pick a stone on the floor. That is, I didn't learn. I didn't study. I had more friends. I had this, I had this. So this time, I have to work with that. So that is the stone you picked from the floor. You get it, and you move with it. So you make sure that this time, my mind is clear that I am coming to do it and do it better. Yes. Okay. But back to your, your situation, when you were withdrawn and then you applied for the same school again, you believed in yourself. Yeah. There, were there other people who also pointed out to you that you can do this, and some people who also helped you get off get up on your feet oh yes so I, I i just want to say a big thank you to my casa ups colleagues the president was called lawrence asari Gwedi. he's now a pastor i want to thank them so much because i, I just went to mc a big program on campus and my name was on the, was on the notice board that i've been redrawn and it was very 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 difficult day for me but the friends came around and they had to call one of our elders, Professor Emi Reynolds. He came to encourage me, the wife. In fact, people came around. They were, they were talking, but I wasn't hearing anything. That moment, my mind was blank. But I thank God that when I sat up, I told myself, Naomi, is this where you want to be? Is that where you want to go? You want to sit in the room and cry all day? No, move. Move. So my casa colleagues, my church, CAC International, Madina Central, especially the elder, Professor Mirenos, and one of my, my friends, my pastor, Ezekiel Amadou Daribi, they were there. They supported me. They helped me. They, that, they, they never want to see me chatting. But now me go and learn. And I was ready to. So they help you yes. get on your feet. Yes. But is there any advice any of them gave you that is keeping you moving till now? Yes. Um, I remember my father telling me that it is either pen or nothing. It is the pen. If you study, it is the pen. 
anything you do, it is the pen. Whatever you do in this world, it is your pen. So if you decide to learn, it is your pen. If you want somebody to use pen to write on the paper for you, it is your choice. So they told me that when you move forward, everything you do, it's your choice. You choose to fail or you choose to succeed. So which of them do you want? I sat back and noticed that, no, I have come too far to go back. I have to move forward. Mr. Kali, apart from your brother, was there any other person that helped you? Yes. To believe uh, in yourself and then Yes, I, I think a, a lot of people. Um, I often say that the best gift God ever gave man is man. Yes, and the people that are always around me are a great source of encouragement to me. Yes, I think at that time um, I was at Kentampo. Yes, and I think my resident pastor then, Pastor Samuel Hiaba, was also of a great um, encouragement to me. Yes, um, he advised me personally not to go for that um, particular program I wanted to go in for because he knows that I was way too big for that. Yes, and I think that was a great source of encouragement. When people are seeing, let me see, a bigger picture of yourself that you yourself, you're not even seeing. Yes, yeah, so I think um, I want to appreciate such people for their encouragement. Okay, all right, there are some students from UDS campus that have been interviewed on the same topic, academic crisis and how to go about it. Let's take a look. Hello viewers, welcome back to Casa Move TV show right here on Casa TV, Changing Lives Through Christ. Today we are in Tamale, UDS Dungu campus, and we want to take the thoughts of these wonderful ladies on the discussion that is ongoing in the studios. You tell us your name, please. I'm my Charity. I'm my Charity, the president, right? The president of Casa. Wow, great. Yeah. And I'm Manuela. Manuela. Yeah. All right. So uh, we want you to sh give us a thought on academic crisis you are on campus you are studying mm -hmm. you are you are doing the things of god you are spiritual you are praying but it's not working for you your grades are not good uh, how do you go about it okay thank you the issue of academic crisis it is something that we have all faced some time back and then as christians and then as people who are trying to get strong in the lord sometimes we face this crisis because god is trying to test our faith and then how much we believe in him what we think he can do for us so we shouldn't give up when all these things come our way we should be strong and then we should seek the people that are a bit above us to see there are so many things that we are going through that others have already encountered in their lives let's get to know how they overcame them let's not de be depressed let's not give the devil the chance to smile on us we should try to be patient in the Lord and wait on him and then see how best he can deliver us because our faith will speak for us. Mm. Faith will speak for us. So, uh, our dear sister, how do you master the courage to still okay. preach to somebody and still tell them to come to Christ whilst you're having such a challenge? You know your grace are no good. Mm -hmm. How do you master the courage to do that? Wow. Okay, so I've not really actually done it to a Christian friend, but I did it to a non-Christian friend. And it was during one difficult block of hours, and the person was finding it very difficult. I was also finding it very difficult. But at that point, I thought that if I'm to show her my weakness at that point, it wouldn't really help both of us. So I decided to just act strong through prayer. I pray that, oh God, please make me strong, because this one, if I'm to go, we we'll all fail together. So we prayed together, we read the scriptures we encouraged ourselves and i told her that we are being tested so we should just just endure because at the end of the day it's not us that writes it he says it's by his spirit that everything is made so it's not us that are going through it it's christ that is going through it for us and at the end his spirit will come out for us so just get a good friend that's our advice you get a good christian friend as my sister said associate yourself with those higher than you and seek encouragement from them if you are doing it personally and it's not working just seek encouragement from them Thank wow you. that's very deep seek encouragement so what about those who have been giving courses that they don't really 
yearn for. They didn't pray for. They didn't bargain for. But they just want to come to school. So they have been giving these courses. What? How do they balance themselves in this academic crisis? Okay, thank you. With this one, I think I faced it because when I was applying for wow. this school, mm -hmm. it was actually the only school that was still open for mm -hmm. application the time I was applying because I did late application. And then I was applying for midwifery. I was really dying for it. Because I wanted medicine and then when I got to SHS, I was discouraged by the school I went to, so I gave up. So the grade I had wouldn't allow me to study medicine right now, unless I improve with my degree somewhere, then I go back. So I applied and they gave me nutrition. I was devastated. I didn't know what to do. But someone said, oh, you just have to develop passion for what they have given you. Because right now, you don't have anyone who will help you to change your course. And then the current of 100s we have in CASA right now. One faced the same issue. Wow. She wasn't given the course or the program she wanted. So she wanted to go back and then the past president, Brad Daniel, he encouraged her that you just have to develop passion for it. There's a reason why God has changed the program for you. And there's something that he wants you to do. Yesterday, a man of God said, it maybe it's because of only one person that you are brought to years. Mm -hmm. So you have to persist. Develop passion for the program they have given you. If what you are really dying for is what is to be your future, God will take you back there someday. Wow. So let's develop passion for what we are being given now. Mm -hmm. And then encourage ourselves that it is the Lord that is inspiring it, mm -hmm. not ourselves. Wow. So we should just be encouraged yeah, by the encouraged. word by the word to know that God is the one is born. So uh, dear sister, I want to uh, twist the question a little bit about mm -hmm. those who are on campus facing challenges in academics with regards to other people bringing the challenge of them. Like somebody is interested in you and mm -hmm. you, if you don't, I mean, succumb to the pressure, they're going to trail you, fail you. How do you balance yourself around that area? Wow. <laughs> nice question. <laughs> How do you balance yourself around that area? I would maybe report to higher authorities and complain perhaps if that person is my fellow student or a worker on campus but if it's an outsider i think you have to tell your friend a friend who will support you and help you and maybe if that person is really creeping you out you just go to we have campus security around so you tell them that this person has been pursuing me and has been affecting my studies or something so if you could do something about it and i think they will try and help you by maybe Living like barring that person from campus or something, yeah, or maybe simple, just block that person's contact. If that person worries you on your phone, block that person's contact. Well, and if the person is a person who is in the position to affect your results, how are you going to deal with that? Prayer. <laughs> yeah. so you need prayer. You need prayer. You need yeah. God's, you need God's hand. hand in it. As, as a divine warfare. The finger of God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 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 end of this session. Uh, we want to encourage you to understand mm -hmm. God is the architect of your life. Mm -hmm. the hand, your, your life is in the hands of God like a seamstress, like a, like a master tailor. He cuts you which way he deems fit. Allow him to take control of your life. students from CASA UDS and then we had their views. Were there issue concerning one of them going through the same thing and then seeing her friend also going through the same thing and she realized her friend is looking up to her so she doesn't have to show her friend that weakness. If you were in her shoes, what would you do for your friend? As we all, she said she had to pray for the friend. She had to encourage herself. She noticed that Somebody has relying on her. Somebody can't watch her to go down. So she has to encourage herself. This applies to all of us. We should know that people are watching us. We are role models to others. And whatever happens to us, it can even break others down. Whatever you go through, it can break others down. But if you're able to stand out, the person will say that this Naomi I am watching, she went down, she's back. So I am encouraging myself, no matter the circumstance, I will equally bounce back. She noticed her situation was the same as her friend, but she didn't give up. She didn't let her know that I'm also facing the same thing. She rather encouraged herself, prayed for her friend, 
also make sure she was on point and she was on her feet. So we all have to try our possible best. That, just as I said earlier, wipe the tears, stand firm, tell yourself, I can do it, I can make it. Yeah. Mr. Kali, if you also had a friend going through the same thing that you're going through, what would you have done? The Bible says that we are the light of the world. And so wherever we find ourselves, we must shine. And the truth is, we are the light of the world. Even when we think we are not shining, darkness recognizes that we are the light and therefore will come to the light. So that was what they, I think the lady demonstrated. Her friend, who was an unbeliever, knew that this person is a Christian. And therefore, I can go to this person for encouragement. She recognized the light. And I think so um, as Christians, wherever we find ourselves, though personally we may be going through some challenges, but we should recognize that we are the light of the world. And therefore, we shouldn't let our problem overshadow us, but rather encourage ourselves and encourage others that comes to us. Okay. People expect so much from us as Christians. As yeah. you said, we are the light of the world. So just as an unbeliever looked up to her so that she can also stand on her feet, what do you think the church on campus can do to help students going through academic crisis? Ms. Naomi. Okay, so anytime I get to UPSA, I tell them to form study groups. Anytime I get there, I told them that you have people who are weak among you and you have the strong ones among you. You have people who are really clever. And sometimes we know our friends' GPA and we know those who are getting close to the first class and others. I always tell them they should form study groups among themselves. Aside you having study groups in your class, we Casa Memes can equally start that thing as well. And they started and people are equally watching and learning from them. Because you have the level 100s among you, level 200s, and the courses they have on campus. You might have one or two people in the CASA congregation who are offering your course. You can start studying mates with them. And now you can start inviting others. So with time of you learning together, you are equally inviting others to your church. Indirectly, you are winning souls to CASA. You get it? As you have your study groups, they come. You are not chatting. You are serious. Last time I went to campus, some, somebody told me that, oh, Mr. Naomi, this study group you made us from, it has really helped me. I didn't understand some course, but when we met, somebody came to explain something. It was so simple. So I'm encouraging all the CASA campuses. We should start forming study groups. It can equally help us as well. After church service or after any evening service, we sit together some 30 minutes. We study the courses which we think is challenging to us. You equally get one person among you who is very good at the course. And you guys will move forward. With time, you get people coming to join your study group. And you are equally winning more so. Yeah, okay. Mr. Kali, what do you think CASA can do? Yes, I think um, as a church, CASA, we can do a lot. Um, when she was speaking, a lot of ideas were just going through. Some of the things yes, ha right. happened. Um, I think during my time, so basically we have to now look at the kind of challenges um, that are available. I did mention of accommodation issue. And I think one case study was a friend of mine. When he's offering engineering and he didn't get accommodation, so imagine, he sits as a shaman. So imagine the kind of stress. And for him, I always tell him that he goes to school. He doesn't go for lectures. Because he leaves the room 8 a.m., he comes back 5 p.m. So such a person, you can understand the kind of fatigue you'll be going through if you should be coming from the house. So I think I allowed him to come and stay with me. And during that stay, he was able to also find his way to get accommodation. And later on, he got his own place. But the time he stayed, I think, as a church, he, he, he only came to because, or I accepted him because he was a church member. Uh -huh. So as a church, we've been of um, help to such a person in that area. And as well too, she made mention of steady groups. Um, so I also want to talk about even finances. You know, I would say that the church is one group that we don't just solve um, one problem. We solve spiritual problems, we solve um, social problems, like emotional, a lot of things. So as a church, sometimes people will come with problems that are, has to do with emotions. Like people have experienced a broken heart, and then they will bring it to you, especially um, the, the, the presidents and the mummies. You have to find a way to encourage the people so that it doesn't distort their academic work. And also, um, some will come with financial challenges. And I remember um, in one of the productions you had here, somebody was sharing an experience, or I think somewhere else here, yeah, where as a group, I think it was from Casa UPSA. Um, one of their students were facing problems to pay the fees. And the leadership decided, okay, they will use 
some of the money as a church to finance the person's school fees so the person can continue. And later on, the parents of the person got realized the church was able to be of an assistant to their daughter and such. Like, they were so happy. And I think these are some of the things as a church we can do to be able to, um, let me say, um, clear the, the academic crisis our members are facing. Yeah, so. I want to add something to him. So aside the CASA executive helping, um, UPSA, the alumni have a, a, a way of also helping the students. So when we have challenging students, they inform the alumni, we contribute our quota, then we send back to campus, and we make sure it goes to the students. And also some of the alumni who stay around, open up their doors for students who come and need a place to stay. Me, I had like two or three ladies coming to stay with me just for them to go to school. Others also open their doors, those who stay around. So I believe, aside we getting the people to stay with us, we should also be able to communicate with our alumni very well. Because if we communicate with them, this challenge, um, challenges of this finance, when we, we talk to the alumni, they'll be able to help. But if you don't communicate with them well, last minute you call them, most of them have a lot of things to do. But if you have this rapport with them, this finance or whichever way you need help from them, they can equally come on board to help you very well. Yeah. Miss Naomi, before you go, we're running out of time, but before you go, I want you to advise our students out there who are watching us and they are going through some sort of academic crisis. Please tell them something. Okay, the, the little thing I'll tell them is that you encourage themselves. You know, you've told your parents, I am going to school. Mommy, I want to make you proud. Daddy, I want to make you proud. I remember when I was dropped out from school, my daddy cried. He really cried. And I told him that I will make him proud. Well, he had a little bit of doubt. But for him, he said, if you say you want to do it, I won't stop you. But God being so good, when I reapplied again, I had a full scholarship. Interesting. And everybody was surprised in the house that, wow, this time you wanted to go again. This time you are not even suffering to attend school. They should believe in themselves, no matter what you've gone through. People have had, they've had a lot of situation worse than what you are going through. That doesn't mean that yours is little, but that is what you are facing now. Encourage yourself. It is not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. It is not easy. As I told you earlier, I nearly killed myself. Anybody else facing that challenge with this exposure and others, it won't be easy. You see your friends laughing at you. Your friends saying a lot of things. You say you worship God. You're your Kata member and you've gone through this. Encourage yourself in your closet. When you cry, you pray and ask God for strength. He will see you through everything. Right now, I'm done with my master's. I, I can say a lot of my colleagues have completed school, but some of them have not even done their master's. And God has granted me good job. Who am I not to thank him? So anywhere I stand, I encourage my ladies and my gentlemen. It is not easy. I'm not saying it is easy. It is not easy at all. Getting their GPA, whichever school you are in, it is not easy. But strive and be yourself and tell yourself that i can make it and get right friends get the right friends in fact there are some people who don't smile you smile to them because of what you want and let them teach you and let them help you at the end i have a friend i will always mention his name he's called leonard lasse he really helped me he said now we are not going to fail the second time he was there and benjamin Moreno. they said you're not going to fail the second time they helped me trust and believe in yourself and now know that i am weak so i need help that word i am weak i need help and you will be helped mr Thank kelly you. what would you say to our students out there okay so my words i think i'll take it from my latest book um the believers mandate at this state that the best ve version of you is not found in your comfort zone but rather in your discomfort zone and this discomfort zone um we can See, it connotes the time of crisis we face academically. And that's the, where the best version of you will come out of you. So don't give up when you're going through a discomforting situation. Keep pressing on. Um, TDJX will say that when they are pruning you, it is not to destroy you, but rather to bring the best out of you. Yes, yeah, so punishment actually, uh, or pain, let me put it that way, is not to destroy you, but to get the best, best version of you. So keep pushing. When there's challenges, when there are no challenges on your way, <laughs> you should, there should be a question mark. But when there are obstacles and you press through them, 
then at the end you have a story to tell because people stars are made of scars so keep pressing and i know that at the end of the tunnel you have a story to share to god's glory god bless you thank you miss naomi terry akwashi and mr elijah kali for making it to today's thank episode you. we hope to see you again thank you lovely viewers for joining us on today's episode we have more interesting episodes coming your way but until then my name is Paula Benji Anum. I will see you same time next week. But before you go, I'll leave you with an excerpt from Sinkodra from Kasake and USC. Enjoy. <laughs>